everywhere, Teehee Ceremony of Innocence is drowned. Yates wrote these words a century ago, in the wake of the First World War. He could not have anticipated the destruction wrought by Hitler, Stalin, Hiroshima, or Pol Pot. Today's neo-fascist revival may pale in comparison to the actual carnage of the 20th century. Yet around the world an attack on innocence has begun, a contempt for the concept of human dignity. And we don't know yet where it may end. In a chilling echo of the turning back from New York Harbor of the MS Street. Louis, carrying 937 Jewish refugees, the new, far-right Italian government has refused to allow the rescue ship Aquarius carrying 629 Libyan refugees rescued at sea, including children and pregnant women, to land in Italy. Suddenly, a new age of Aquarius may be dawning, reflected not in love and freedom but in exclusion and hostility to the other. Showing a ray of humanity, large-hearted mayors of southern Italian ports have said the Aquarius is welcome in their towns. Italians may well have a point that the rules of the European Union have placed a disproportionate and unsustainable burden on an already listing economy, but sending innocent refugees back out to sea is no solution. In Gaza, unarmed protesters protesting the move of the Israeli capital to Jerusalem were met with live ammunition. 124 Palestinians were killed and more than a thousand wounded. To be sure, Gaza is a violent place run by Hamas and unguided missiles are periodically lobbed into Israeli territory. But firing into crowds of civilians is a patent violation of international law. Again, the image of innocence, meeting stone throwers with Goliath-like force, is destroyed by machine gun fire. U.S. President Donald Trump looking at a cake being brought for him during a working lunch with Singapore's Prime Minister Lee Xian Long during his visit to the Astana, the official residence of the Prime Minister, in Singapore. Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump will meet on June 12 for an unprecedented summit, with the U.S. President calling it a one-time shot at peace. Maharam Mings presidential candidate of Turkey's main opposition Republican People's Party CHP, delivers a speech from the roof of a bus during a campaign meeting in Istanbul French President Emmanuel Macron, German Chancellor Angela Merkel and Japan's Prime Minister Shinzo Abe speaking to US President Donald Trump during the second day of the G7 meeting in Charlevoix, Canada. Looking on is U.S. National Security Advisor John R. Bolton. Former South African President Jacob Zuma sings and dances on stage after delivering a speech during a rally in his support outside the High Court, in Durban on June 8, 2018 Russian President Vladimir Putin listens to a question during his annual call-in show in Moscow. Putin hosts call-in shows every year, which typically provide a platform for ordinary Russians to appeal to the president on issues ranging from foreign policy to housing and utilities. Protesters wave flags and shout slogans during a demonstration against the use of the term Macedonia in any solution to a dispute between Athens and Skopje over the former Yugoslav Republic's name, in the northern town of Pella, Greece. Police officers salute as the caskets of police women Soraya Belkasimi, 44, and Lucille Garcia, 54, arrive during their funeral in Liege. The two officers, and one bystander were killed in Liege on Tuesday by a gunman. Police later killed the attacker, and other officers were wounded in the shooting. A rescue worker carries a child covered with ash after a volcano erupted violently in El Rodeo, Guatemala. 
Volcán Can de Fuego, whose name means Volcano of Fire, spewed an 8 km, 5 mile, stream of red hot lava and belched a thick plume of black smoke and ash that rained onto the capital and other regions. Dozens were killed across three villages. A recycler drags a huge bag of paper sorted for recycling past a heap of non-recyclable material at Richmond Sanitary Landfill site in the industrial city of Bulawayo. Plastic waste remains a challenging waste management issue due to its non-biodegradable nature. If not managed properly plastic ends up as litter polluting waterways, wetlands and storm drains causing flash flooding around Zimbabwe's cities and towns. Urban and rural areas are fighting the continuous battle against a scourge of plastic litter. On June 5, 2018 the United Nations marked the World Environment Day which plastic pollution is the main theme this year. Palestinian mourners carry the body of 21-year-old medical volunteer Azan al-Najjar during her funeral after she was shot dead by Israeli soldiers near the Gaza border fence on June 1, in another day of protests and violence. She was shot near Khan Yunus in the south of the territory, Health Ministry spokesman Ashraf al qura said, bringing the toll of Gazans killed by Israeli fire since the end of March to 123. Spain's new Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez poses after a vote on a no-confidence motion at the Spanish Parliament in Madrid. Spain's Parliament ousted Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy in a no-confidence vote sparked by fury over his party's corruption woes, with his socialist arch-rival Pedro Sánchez automatically taking over. Zinedine Zidane looks on after a press conference to announce his resignation as manager from Real Madrid. He confirmed he was leaving the Spanish Giants, just days after winning the Champions League for the third year in a row. A worker cleans up the millionaire migrants makeshift camp along the Canal de Saint-Denis near Port de la Villette, northern Paris, following its evacuation on May 30. More than a thousand migrants and refugees were evacuated early in the morning from the camp that had been set up for several weeks along the canal. Police and ambulances are seen at the site where a gunman shot dead three people, two of them policemen, before being killed by elite officers, in the eastern Belgian city of Liège. French President Emmanuel Macron meets with Mamoudou Gassama, 22, from Mali, at the presidential Elysee Palace in Paris. Gassama living illegally in France is being honored by Macron for scaling an apartment building over the weekend to save a four-year-old child dangling from a fifth-floor balcony. Migrants wait to disembark from the ship Aquarius in the Sicilian harbor of Catania, Italy Island awaits the official result of a referendum that could end the country's ban on abortion. Co-director of Together for Yes Alva Smith speaks to the media after exit polls suggested victory for the Yes campaign. Film producer Harvey Weinstein arrives at the first precinct in Manhattan where he turned himself into New York police for sexual misconduct charges. Russian President Vladimir Putin ah, meets with his French counterpart Emmanuel Macron at the Constantine Palace in Strolna, outside St. Petersburg, on May 24, 2018 people protest out as the Tamil Nadu house after. At least 10 people were killed when police fired on protesters seeking closure of plant on environmental grounds in town of Thuthakudi in southern state of Tamil Nadu, in New Delhi. 
people demonstrate in Paris during a nationwide day protest by French public sector employees and public servants against the overhauls proposed by French President Emmanuel Macron, calling them an attack by the centrist leader against civil services as well as their economic security. Newly appointed Catalan President Quim Torra arrives to visit jailed Catalan separatist politicians at the Estremero jail near Madrid. Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro casts his vote during the presidential elections in Caracas. Maduro was seeking a second term in power. Channelized lava emerges on Kilauea Volcano's lower reef rift zone on Hawaii. The USGS said on its website that a fast-moving Pahoehoe lava flow that emerged from Fisher 20 continues to flow southeast, with the quickest of three lobes progressing at 230 yards, 210 meters, per hour. Santa Fe High School student Dakota Schrader is comforted by her mother Susan Davidson following a shooting at the school in Texas. Schrader said her friend was shot in the incident. Multiple people have been killed. French President Emmanuel Macron British Prime Minister Theresa May and German Chancellor Angela Merkel meeting during the EU Western Balkans summit in Sofia, Bulgaria. People hold flags with the state coat of arms of Russia as they drive along a bridge, which was constructed to connect the Russian mainland with the Crimean Peninsula across the Kerch Strait. Palestinians run away from tear gas shot at them by Israeli forces during a protest in Ramallah, in the occupied West Bank a Palestinian demonstrator runs during a protest against the U.S. Embassy move to Jerusalem and ahead of the 70th anniversary of the Nakba at the Israel-Gaza border. A bullet hole on the window of a cafe in Paris, the day after a knifeman killed one man and wounded four other people before being shot dead by police Germany's Chancellor Angela Merkel looks on after receiving the Lamp of Peace, the Nobel Catholic Award for her work of conciliation for the peaceful cohabitation of peoples at the Basilica Superior of St. Francis of Assisi in Italy. Police forensics investigate the death of seven people in a suspected murder-suicide in Australia. Four children are among seven people that were found dead at a rural property in Osmington, near Margaret River. Detectives are investigating the incident, which was said to be treated as a murder-suicide, media reported. Two firearms were found at the scene, Western Australia police said. Missiles rise into the sky as Israeli missiles hit air defense position and other military bases, in Damascus, Syria. The Israeli military on Thursday said it attacked dozens of Iranian targets in neighboring Syria in response to an Iranian rocket barrage on Israeli positions in the Golan Heights in the most serious military confrontation between the two bitter enemies to date. Iranian MPs burning a U.S. flag in the parliament in Tehran Iran said it will hold talks with signatories to a nuclear deal after U.S. President Donald Trump's decision to withdraw from the accord, which it branded psychological warfare. President Hassan Rouhani also said Iran could resume uranium enrichment without limit in response to Trump's announcement. Newly elected Prime Minister of Armenia Nikol Pashinyan addresses the crowd in Republic Square in Yerevan. The leader of protests that gripped Armenia for weeks was named the country's new Prime Minister on Tuesday, overcoming the immediate political turmoil but raising uncertainty about the longer term. Russian President Vladimir Putin walks before his president inauguration ceremony at the Kremlin in Moscow. 
lava from a robust fissure eruption on Kilau Izi Strift Zone consumes a home, then threatens another, near Pahoa, Hawaii. The total number of homes lost within the Leilani Estates subdivision thus far is 21. And geologists from the Hawaii Volcanoes Observatory do not expect the eruption to cease any time soon. A local state of emergency has been declared after Mount Kilau I erupted near residential areas, forcing mandatory evacuation of about 1,700 citizens from their nearby homes. The crater's floor collapsed on the 1st of May and is since then continuing to erode its walls and generating huge explosions of ashes. Several earthquakes have been recorded in the area where the volcanic eruptions continue, including a 6.9 magnitude earthquake which struck the area on the 4th of May. Russian police carrying struggling opposition leader Alexei Navalny to demonstration against President Vladimir Putin in Moscow. Thousands of demonstrators denouncing Putin's upcoming inauguration into a fourth term gathered in the capital's Pushkin Square. Chinese President Xi Jinping speaks at an event to mark Karl Marx's 200th birthday at the Great Hall of the People in Beijing. President Vladimir Putin meets with FIFA President Gianni Infantino in Sochi, ahead of the 2018 World Cup in Russia. Supporters of opposition lawmaker Nikol Pashinyan protest in Republic Square in Yerevan, Armenia. Pashinyan has urged his supporters to block roads, railway stations and airports after the governing Republican Party voted against his election as Prime Minister. Cubans march during the May Day rally at Revolution Square in Havana. The sky is the limit, a Saudi man and woman fly over the Arabian Sarawak Mountains in the first ever joint wingsuit flight in traditional dress. A symbolic leap of faith towards women's empowerment in Saudi Arabia. A general view for the damaged railway station in Al-Qadam neighborhood, after it was recaptured from Islamic State militants, in the south of Damascus. According to media reports, the Syrian army continued the military offensive it has launched earlier this month against militant groups entrenching in southern Damascus and captured several neighborhoods, including al qadam and Al-Asali and targeting the remnants of armed groups in Al-Hajar Al-Aswad and its surrounding in Damascus southern countryside. Comedian Michelle Wolf attends the celebration after the White House Correspondents' Dinner. Conservatives walked out after Wolf brutally ridiculed President Donald Trump and his aides during her piece. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and South Korean President Moon Jae-in raised their hands after signing on a joint statement North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, left, and South Korean President Moon Jae-in raised their hands after signing on a joint statement at the border village of Panmunjom in the demilitarized zone, South Korea. The Korean War will be formally declared over after 65 years, the North and South have said. At a historic summit between leaders Kim Jong-un and Moon Jae-in, the neighboring countries agreed they would work towards peace on the peninsula with a formal end to the conflict set to be announced later this year. The pair agreed to bring the two countries together and establish a peace zone on the contested border. Women hold portraits of their relatives, who are victims of the Chernobyl nuclear disaster, during a commemoration ceremony in Kiev, Ukraine. Rohingya refugees gather in the no man's land behind Myanmar's border lined with barbed wire fences in Mundor district, Rakhine state bounded by Bangladesh. Myanmar government said on April 15, 
it repatriated on April 14 the first family of Rohingya out of some 700,000 refugees who have fled a brutal military campaign, a move slammed by a rights group as a PR stunt ignoring UN warnings that a safe return is not yet possible. President Donald Trump French President Emmanuel Macron, First Lady Melania Trump and Bridget Macron hold hands on the White House balcony during a state arrival ceremony in Washington. A boy walks on a pile of garbage covering a drain in New Delhi. It is difficult to know where to begin with Trump's assault on innocence. The Trump administration's assault on the archetypal bond between mothers and children is as indefensible as it is grotesque. Thousands of children have been separated and incarcerated because their parents, like tens of millions of parents before them, wanted to bring their children to the land of immigrants. Who is taking care of these children? Where are they? No one knows or seems much to care. Attorney General Sessions, trying to show his toughness to his dismissive boss, claims the policy is necessary as a disincentive to immigration. Of course, in recent years, net immigration has gone down because the Mexican economy has done better in recent years, a result that Trump seeks to preclude. It is an unspeakable cruelty to Hispanic parents and children in search of a rationale. To similar effect is Trump's destruction of Dakar, sending innocent children who have never known any home other than the United States, back to unfamiliar countries of their birth. Trump uses the image of violent gangs like MS-13, but is exiling ordinary American kids from their homes one of whom was violently killed in Mexico last week. Again, families are separated as Trump lumps all immigrants into the category of inherent threats, all of whom are too violent and too threatening to live in the wonderfully peaceful United States. In Guantanamo Bay, 30 men have spent more than 15 years in American captivity without any charges ever filed or to be filed. America can cut back on food stamps while spending over $5 million per detainee. Until now, the presumption of innocence precluded detention without trial. Again, they are Muslims, presumed without trial to be violent jihadis. There are whispers of evidence obtained by torture. Trump believes torture works, against all credible evidence but he will not subject that evidence to scrutiny by neutral courts, he is not so crazy about courts either. Now these men are forever prisoners, where their innocence is irrelevant and there are no ceremonies to declare their innocence and send them home. Charity Boat rescues migrants off the coast of Italy No one ever accused Trump, or the European neo-fascists, or Netanyahu, of being innocents. They are nobody's fools, wised up guys, who know that beneath the secret veneer of pregnant Syrian or Mexican or Libyan women or children, or unarmed Gazan protesters lurk jihadis and gang members. Each of these leaders purports to be in the Judeo-Christian tradition, which venerates innocence, faith, trust in the unquestioning love of God of Abraham and Jesus. To be sure, we cannot be governed by holy fools, but the drowning of innocence, the demonizing of children, the shooting of unarmed civilians and the turning back of innocent migrants are a fundamental refutation of the irreducible respect for the dignity of every human being, a rock on which any decent culture must be based. Eric Lewis is chairman of Reprieve US, a charity that advocates against capital punishment and indefinite detention and has represented Guantanamo detainees for more than 15 years. 
He is also a director of Independent Digital News and Media, which publishes The Independent. The views reflected are his own.